Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we're back again. It's the Architect Beat Music Business Podcast. It's your your host, um, Juggernaut. And Mike Trauma D in the building. We are Architect Beats. If you don't know who we are, we are platinum producers. We have basically produced for every single, um, not every single, but, you know, most <laughs> of the iconic uh, hip-hop artists over the last 20 years in the business. Um, you know, we, we've been in this game a long time. Um I want to do some housekeeping. If you if you first time here, make sure that you just follow us, um, uh, subscribe, and of course, if you like the content, you know, please share it. Right, that's that's the thing. That's how I get the word out to the people. We're trying to give back to the people the information and the stuff that they need to know to be successful in the music business. Um, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So we got a bunch of topics today. You know, people be sending stuff in. You know you know, asking us questions, but then also there's some things that's happening in the news that's relevant to some of the previous stuff that we, we talked about. Um, and one of those things that um, we talked about in a previous episode had to do with copyright, right? Mm-hmm, uh, right. Copy, copyright in your music, the importance of copyright in your music, and protecting why... Protecting yourself. Protecting, protecting yourself. yourself. Yeah. And, and why um, copyright in your music beyond... Um, you know the, the the copyright that you get once you make it in your uh, your digital audio workstation, or after you wrote the song. How, why that's not enough mm-hmm. to sometimes pursue legal action if your song has been lifted. Um, right. We talk about the um, there's a uh, NLE Chopper. If you're not familiar with him, he, he's a he's a, a new rapper, really dope. Um, but he's being sued by an artist named uh, uh, Kilo um, about you know his song basically being. Um, used in a new song for for um basically a song was being used by Annalie Chopper um and it, it was really significant to me because I said okay the when I read the article one of the things that stood out was that it it basically said that his song was copywritten um officially at a certain date and um the main reason for that was because if you don't have it copywritten you, you you can't file a lawsuit. So so Chopper so Chopper what sampled or recorded the, the same exact record and put it out when it was previously already released. It's not even that he sampled it. He kind of lifted the melody. Um, it's the melody um, parts of the parts of the hook melody. Okay. Um, some of the pitch, you know, it's it's okay. it's, it's real similar. Like you can kind of tell. Like it's 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 a situation where. You know, he had an he had, he listened to somebody and said, "All right, I'm um." He listened to it and he he put it incorporated into his song. Mm-hmm. Um, and the previous song had Big Boy on it, so it wasn't like as if oh. it was like a song that wasn't um Big Boy from Outkast. If you're not familiar, um, but it it wasn't as if there wasn't a it wasn't a popular previous song. It was a right. popular song that was released um somewhere in the nineties. Okay. So he may have he may have just done it just thinking you know may have taken it and said this is dope. And may have forgotten to clear it or may have decided, you know, song is too old. Nobody would care. Right. Or nobody would catch it. Because sometimes that happens. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, and and um, the significance of it. And if you if you haven't missed, if you haven't um, heard the previous, uh, if you haven't heard the previous episode about copyright, you got to make sure that your music is being copywritten at copyright.gov. Yeah, they'll come for you, man. Like you, you can't, you can't really play these games, and you have to, you know, do do your do your business right. You know, it's better to be safe than than, you know, you make a hit and then they come they come for you for all of it. You know, so it's it's best to make sure your business is tied up pretty pretty good. You know, um, when it comes to that, um, gotta register your your material. You know, so you know they won't come after you. <laughs> and they and they're gonna come, you know. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that they're gonna come for you. And I don't think that um, I don't think people realize the importance that listen like, and they'll wait. They're real strategic about it. They'll wait. Mm-hmm. They'll wait for this song to pop off. They'll wait. They'll wait for. They'll wait to see how much it's going to earn revenue to make sure that it's worth it. And once they determine that it's worth it, they're coming for it. Like you know, and and they're, they they're not gonna. You know, some people will look to take it down, but others will say, "No, we don't. We want all the revenue." It's a good thing it was registered because he could have came for it, and uh, they could have said, "Well, was it registered?" And then he would have really had to fight for it. 
and the, the, the proof of burden would have been on on the uh, original the original uh producer to try right. and you know so it's kudos kudos to him for you know for having it registered and you know taking care of business in the beginning because that could have came back and haunted him and and and, and um from our position and from our experience and we've been in the six we've been here mm-hmm. where our music has been released unauthorized right. and and you know if you miss that step of trying to, of trying to get remedied for your music being used unauthorized and you have not filed an official copyright.gov um you know um copyright right, right. if you have not if you have not done that you basically are handcuffing your lawyer. Your lawyer is going to be able. Your lawyer will be able to send like cease and desist and stuff like that, but they'll have no real bite, right? And the the, the people who did the infringement may not even really jump to pay you. They may know that they don't have the rights to do it, but they know that if you don't have a copyrighted like that, it's going to be hard for you to to basically for you to sue. Not not impossible. But they know it's going to be hard for you to do because, you know, there's there's a section in that in the uh, on the copyright website that's that tells you specifically that in order for you to get remedy, it need to be if for you to file suit, it has to be registered. So basically, the the composition can truly be yours. You know, you can prove that it's yours, like as in you have the files or yeah. those things. But if it's not registered, man. Like they don't care. <laughs> they don't Say that, care. That's that's what's important is that they will not care. And if you don't understand this this machine, it's like a bully machine. They do not care. They will say, No, we released it, we copyrighted it for ourselves, for our own use. Right. If you don't have a, a copyright that predates our copyright, we just yep. looking at you like you just frivolous. You can have all the email chains you want, you can have all of the file transfer information that you want. You know, again, your lawyer could be sending everything. The most you'll get is probably a takedown. But, you know, good luck trying to get any royalties. Good luck trying to get paid, you know, without actually filing suit. Um, It it gets very, very, very difficult, very spicy. So, again, folks, I cannot stress the importance of it. Like, you know, you should be copywriting your, your, your music if you can't afford. I wouldn't say to do every single song, every single work individually but you can you can do it collective, bun- collectively bundle, bundle yeah. it up yeah you could take a bunch of songs mm-hmm. and you can send them in at one time and just say hey this is volume one you know maybe right. all the beats from 2020 all the beats and, and songs from 2021 and you can do that well, especially once you start sending stuff out right well, when you're sending stuff out you don't know who's going to take it. You don't know who's going to jump on it and then hit you at the last hour and say, "Hey, your song coming out of my mixtape tomorrow." You're like, "Oh." So a little so a little producer tip, man, just take all the beats that you've done maybe from maybe January, you could do a quarterly, whatever the case may be. All right. Um, take a bunch of them, send them out, make sure they're all labeled as far as individual uh tracks so you know what's what, what's being sent out. And, and you have to keep a log of these things. So you know that, for example, January through March, April, you sent, you've sent maybe 50 beats to be registered. Um, and you have a list of the 50 beats. And you just keep files of the 50 beats every time you send out. So this makes, the, uh, this makes it a whole lot easier if you need to go back and file a claim. You know exactly, okay, which volume you sent it out on which track and it's, it makes it a whole lot easier if you, you need to sue somebody. And also make sure that you're keeping the correspondence. Um, don't, don't delete any emails. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, don't like, don't pay, delete any emails. Pay for that. Pay for that Gmail storage. <laughs> pay, pay, yeah. Pay for that extra Gmail space. If you are running out of space, cause you're sending out a lot of music do not delete any emails because in our case, I think I think we had um, we had to go back as far as maybe ten years to find the email correspondence of the actual correspondence between us and that particular artist and their manager to kind of substantiate with the label that we had made contact that we had agreed to certain terms mm-hmm. and those things weren't um, they weren't honored. 
And that's when they started to see like, okay, we got an issue now. And then that's when they started to decide to act accordingly and started to take, take care of things to remedy us. But again, you, you, you have to make sure that you have those, those things as proof. Um, definitely needs to have the copyright taken care of because if you don't, um, it, it, again, your lawyer will not have the bite that they need to have because they can now threaten with suit. You know, without the copyright officially, they can only threaten with cease and desist and takedowns, and that's not going to get you any money. Right? So switch, switching gears to something else that I saw online that um I thought was real interesting um, as it relates to TikTok. You know, TikTok right now is like, oof. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's the monster now. It's a, it's a gangster, <laughs> a gangster platform for music right now. Mm-hmm. And not just music for everything. You know, once I started to spend a lot more time on it, I started realizing, wait, it's just not, this is just not a music dance twerk machine type kind of platform. This platform really has some utility. Um, but, uh, they're, they're, they're recently talked about updating their one minute video clips to three minutes. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about the significance of that. <laughs> And, and what does that mean to you as an independent artist? You know, um, watch, try, try watch to out, in. watch out, YouTube. <laughs> they come in. That's the first thing that's that that just jumped out. They coming for YouTube. It seems like, and they they may they they listen. They comment for it, and I think I think what happens with them is that it, it's it's um for those of you who are not who have not been on TikTok, TikTok is kind of like YouTube, but you know instead of the horizontal space they do the vertical space videos Mm -hmm. and um the one minute clips typically they have a music bed but you know people can insert their songs there and you know that kind of makes it kind of cool whatever and it helps to promote certain kind of dances certain kind of things so forth and so on people do a lot of diy stuff on there which i think Mm -hmm. is really dope i think those things tend to it's what's driving the platform as people um Showing people how to be entrepreneurs and certain things, showing people certain kind of life hacks. Right. Like I, th- I think those things are really important. But th- the significance of going from one minute to three minutes. That, well, like, that that means that means there's going to be a larger uh, revenue shares. Yeah. Because now you have more time for advertising. Yeah. Right. And then remember, we talked about this in the previous episode about um, the importance of holding and maintaining people's attention. Mm. And what is what is the what is the reason why we want you from one minute to three minutes It's because we want to maintain you on the platform. We want longer watch time. Once mm. we got you on the platform, your ass ain't leaving. <laughs> All right. Wow. So, so, so it's 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 critical for folks who are trying to kind of get their music out, trying to get their, their situation, trying to build their audience. It's like, now you got more time to do it. And now it's, instead of that one minute, it's going to be interesting to see what the bottom line is going to, uh, is going to be after this is implemented, um, fully, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what the rest of revenue is going to look like. It's, it's definitely, I think it's going to be, that's going to be something to, to, to look at. A lot of these other platforms are going to have to figure out what they want to do, right? Um, YouTube got the shorts going right now, which is supposed to be the combat to them. Mm-hmm. But the shorts, from what my, from what I understand, um, I don't know if they're monetized. I think I think the- that's that's going to be. I think that's where the part of the problem is. Where you know, if you got a larger influencer whose content is monetized, they're not going to mm-hmm. want to. Um, they're not going to want to. Um, use a part of the platform that isn't monetized, right? But you know, you know what's interesting also is that Facebook is is going to penalize, um, like if you're using TikTok videos on, pretty much on the Instagram, like they're going to penalize you for it. You know, you can't cross. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what do you mean penalized? Does, are they going to suppress it? Of you course. Know, I'm thinking that's the only thing they can do. You know, but. That's 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 wild. You, you gotta really, really, really admire, and I, I always say this to my own, to my to my brother. I always say the gangsterization of certain. I was going. I was thinking the of, same thing of, like, of certain platforms. Like, cause think about it. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> How dare you use their platform, their stuff, on my platform? 
<laughs> that's that's the issue. That's, that's that's what it is. That's the issue. The issue is that they don't want you to use their. their your, you don't want you to use their video, their content on your platform. Mm-hmm. You know, I dare you to take a YouTube video and post that link in your in your feed for Facebook. No one will ever see it. You ever know that you post a face a, a YouTube link and it gets no likes? It's like suppression is real. Suppression is real. So I can imagine I can imagine Facebook saying, "No, fuck this. We're not going to put any of that TikTok content. And if it has a TikTok logo on it, you can right. rest assured that if the logo was somewhere in the video, you can't repurpose that for reels. They're not going to let you do that shit. They're not going to let and, you do it. And if you do do it, they're going to suppress it and they say, "Oh, you can post it if you want to, but no one will see it." Yep. You know, and, and that this is this is this is the game, man. This is the tech game and the, the tech gangsters, you know, trying to <laughs> these, <laughs> these trying are the to, nerd the nerd thugs. Right, trying to they, fight for your attention. They got and it. Being, and being real gangsters about this shit, saying, Hey, we're not we don't want your shit on our platform. You know, mm-hmm. and, and, and this is this is this is really you know, so when these guys are now extending their time, right, for the videos, it's kind of saying, Okay, you know, we we trying to fuck with y'all. And we trying to come for, we trying to come for that audience. And the TikTok content just seems to be better than Instagram content lately. I I I I'm that I might agree. be my personal opinion. <laughs> I, I but I'm, agree. I'm like I've never stayed this long on Instagram. I mean, it is it is isn't TikTok the out of Instagram and the, some of the other uh social media. They are the the newest. Am I am I correct? Yeah, but it's 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 something about it's like the I I think what happens with Instagram is that I don't know if they lean too hard on the IG model content. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that you know because for some when you see all that content you feel like you don't have any place on here, right? Like if you're not looking for that you don't have a place on Instagram per se, right? Mm-hmm. Like you know so now not to say that the, the IG model type of coil and over the TikTok with the dancers and stuff, but at least TikTok has a little bit more. Um, what from, from from what I notice for me, and maybe it's just geared to my algorithm or what I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. It's just more, um, more self help stuff, more do it yourself right. stuff, yourself, more, yeah, more, more business oriented content. You know, and people, I, and are, I, people are using IG, it smart. IG does does feel uh, cluttered. Yeah, you know, it does feel cluttered. So, um, and like I said, I'm wondering also is that because uh, TikTok is somewhat a newer platform versus some of the old other platforms, so they're still new and fresh with ideas and, and different things that they could implement. While the other uh, social media platforms, they're just trying to just you know stay relevant. They, they're trying to see what the new guy is doing and trying to implement those same features with the, with their with their platforms. And and I know and I know Zucks tried to buy that bitch. I'm sure. <laughs> I know he tried. You know, and then when you can't buy them, what you're gonna do is try and mimic uh what they got going. And he's the master of that. hmm He's the master of that. Um the truth of the matter is that, you know, between his acquisition of Instagram, which was Vine, right? Mm-hmm. And then and then and then um his acquisition of WhatsApp. Like, you know, like these are powerful platforms. You know sure. what I'm saying? Like like so I know he wanted TikTok. I know he was salivating for it and just couldn't get it. You know what I mean? But then, you know, he'll help to destroy it, kinda like how, you know, he helped to get rid of um Snapchat, right? Just kinda mimicked it to the point where it's not, you know, it's not as uh, relevant as it could have been. Right. You know? But again, that three minute that th- that three minute implementation is gonna yeah. Like you said, it's going to probably raise a lot of ad revenue. Um, definitely oh. keep people on the platform longer and keep people's attention. And that's so the battle art- right now. So artists and producers, you know, get in tune with TikTok. If if you're not on TikTok or you kind of just, you know, sway away from it, you need to you need to get involved. You don't have a choice. <laughs> like this is what I'm realizing, or you know, this is what you need to realize is that you don't have a choice to, you don't have a choice. You can't ignore these platforms. If you will, if you want to um, stay in the game, like you don't have a choice. You can't just say, I don't like that platform and I don't want to be on it. 
Like, you don't have a choice. Like, you know, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Um, I want to get into this next um, topic where I kind of saw this on one of the forums. Um, someone was asking, when is the time to go all in, right? And when is the right time? Um, if there ever, ever a right time to go all in in music and making sure that music is your career, like when do you say, okay, I want to stop doing everything else and I want to pursue this thing in music? When is the right time? That's a that's a that's something like a million dollar question right there. Um, I'm sure a lot of people um, ask that question, and it varies really from from person to person. You know, some people may. And it depends on your it depends on the responsibilities you have too, you know. It could also be an age thing if if you're at a certain age where you don't have certain responsibilities, you don't have a, a quote unquote family and all these things. Then you know you could probably jump right in and give it all you got from the from the door. Um, in another instance, is if you have a family and you you know you're trying to take care, and some may say, well, you know, make sure you keep your day job until. You know, you start getting some revenue or your revenue is enough to replace your day job. It really is really, you know, you know, based on your own situation. Some people, if you have a two income home, some people may say, well, if, if the if the if the first person's income can manage and sustain the household while the second person is out there, um, you know, making runs and trying to, you know, go, go all in with the music. Some people are able to do that as well. So it really you know, from what I've seen, it really depends on what your situation is, you know, and there's a lot of factors that you have to take into consideration in, in making that decision. It's, it's, it's really tough. Um, it's really tough because now the ways to, to earn in the music business aren't the ways that they used to be before, right? Um, mm-hmm. be- before you, you, you used to be able to have these major label machines where, you know, if you did some work, you were able to go out here and go get a check from them. Now you have to generate your own income, right? You have to basically create your fan base. You have to uh, create a connection with your fan. They have to know one like you. And and now you have to get them into um, buying what you got to sell. Now, some people will say that's easier than it was in the past, but I'm not sure if that's really the case. Um so it's kind of like, when do you know it's the right time? There, there really is no, no, there really is no way to know. Um, like you said, I think the best thing is probably making sure that you do have a support system, um, a support system that will allow you to be able to kind of pursue it without the stress of saying, okay, I got to pay my rent. Mm-hmm. Right. And then also it boils down to your responsibilities. Like you said, if you have children, et cetera, that of course that's going to, impact your ability to, to, to say, okay, I want to go all in, especially if you don't have the revenue streams in music and, and, you know, um, the revenue streams in music. Now it's, you know, between the streaming, between the publishing and so forth and so on, there are more streams, but those things will take time to generate. It takes time to generate significant, um, followers to where your YouTube can pay for you, um, significant time for where you can, have enough followers and content for Facebook to pay you for that stuff. Um, significant time to build a following for your streams to start to really, you know, provide, for, you know, um, stuff like that. So if you don't have some of the, the, the old school revenue, like how maybe like we might have where we have, you know, records that have sold in perpetuity and then, you know, you're able to leverage those things into certain investments and then you're able to kind of live off of those things. And then, so forth and so on and you can kind of dive in if you don't have that it definitely creates um it creates a, a, a lot of obstacles um what do you think would be some tips that you can say to someone who says okay i want to go all in you know what should i do how should i do it first well first of all there there is so many different um ways there's so many different ways of uh getting revenue it's not just one thing so that's one thing a person should, should open their open their their their, their mind to, that is it's not just one way or one thing, you know. Um, I think I think that you have to do a lot of research first, you know. You have to do a lot of research, and be mindful and be careful of uh, what they decide to jump in at first, because, you know, 
you have to invest in yourself in this game. And you can easily lose it all if you're not careful. So I think it's very important that you do a lot of research and, you know, you, you, you spend time before even putting a dollar out, you spend time surveying the, the, the you know, the scene, speaking to people, uh, networking, um, seeing who is who, you know, knowing who is really valuable and who's just talking shit. You know, I think you need to, to, to do those things before you even think about uh, spending a dollar and, and, and going all in. You know, you have to do the a real, real, uh, real investigation of what's what, who's who, what's it going to take, how much time is it going to take. And then once you've got all of that, you've got to uh, definitely put a schedule together for yourself because it's going to require some discipline. It's going to require late nights. It's going to require certain things that's going to be consistent day in, day out, maybe at a particular time, day in, day out. You know, so you have to cut out time in order to be consistent with uh, what it is what it is you're trying to do, whether it's um, creating music, creating content, going out there and networking, um, whatever the case may be. So I would say the first step always is to do is spend some real time um, doing the research. And I don't mean just getting on the, online and just Googling a couple of things. It also means reading, reading a couple of uh, books couple of video, watching a couple of videos, getting out there in real life, in real person and, and meeting and greeting and talking to people, you know, and, and, and getting a, a full idea of, you know, what's what. Um, and of course, knowing the business, knowing the business, knowing how it works, getting those books and, and really reading up on those things. That's going to be very key. Um, the nerds win in this game. I won't put you like this. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't how it used to be. The nerds are winning in this game. That's what, that's how you got to move. You got to, you got to be smart in this. It's so funny that we we, we say, we call them the nerds, right? You know, so. And that ain't no disrespect. <laughs> that ain't no disrespect. Back in the days, it was considered disrespectful calling somebody a nerd. But now that thing is like, you want to be a nerd. Like that's, 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 that's a compliment right now. Like. I, 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 re- I remember one of your homies calling me. They referred to me one time as a technical goon, right? Um, so it's like, and I, and I, said, I said, I said, well, why would you say that? And it's like, but like you said, it's like you have to evaluate what is what what are you going to need to survive, right? What what do I need to earn to survive? And then, like you said, now we got to do the research. We got to find out what are the you know. Where am I going to be able to fit in? Where am I going to be able to get that money from? And then, like you said, also the consistency, that's so important. Getting on a schedule, that's important. Um, You know, finding time to create the content, finding time to be creative, that's important. Being able to replicate it, keep doing it over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, that's critical because it's like, excuse me, when they say, they say consistency it's key. It's like, but that that's going to enhance your 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 chances of being successful. Can it guarantee it? No, it doesn't guarantee it. It's, it's you know, it's it's results may vary, but I can we can. What I can say is this: is that the more chances that you have, or the more content that you have, the more music that you have, the greater chances of you finding your 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 niche, growing your audience, so forth and so on. So, is there a perfect? If there a perfect time? No, there isn't a perfect time to do it. Is there an ideal time? No, there isn't an ideal time. I would tell you to start today. Start researching today. Start reading today. Start trying to figure out the platforms that are, that, that that resonate with you and that you're going to be able to grow your audience. Right? Do that today, and then start to kind of build yourself. Um, start to build yourself slowly. And and see how you can see see how that can generate some momentum, and hopefully it starts to generate some income. But like you said, consistency, research, um, understanding the platforms, um, understanding, understanding what, the business, the business, understanding what your personal needs are, understanding if you have a support system um, to be able to to be able to. If you can support yourself, if you got a nest egg to support yourself while you chase your dream, is one thing. If you have to work mm-hmm. and then moonlight, that is also an option because um, 
I would tell folks, folks ask me about that too, that I, I said, listen, don't always look at your job as a negative situation. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with having a job that, that, that supports your family, but also your job can be used as the revenue or the income to support your dreams, right? You still have to buy equipment, right? You can see that in the back. You still have to buy cameras. You still have to buy cell phones. You still got to buy these things. These things cost money. Yeah. So, so, you know, you use the revenue from your job yeah. to be able to help to support your dream. Right. Right. Don't, don't sit here and don't think that, you know, there's, there's some sort of, you know, how people be get online and say, Hey, if you got a job, you, you're not a boss. You did it. Everybody needs investment capital in order to start that situation. When we started, um, I had a, I had a job, you know, you would try, you were, you were, you know, interning, you were doing these things. Everybody was working mm-hmm. and I leveraged the job into some credit. I leveraged the credit into some equipment and the yep. rest is his, and the rest is history. There you go. There you go. All right. You, you can't, you can't just, you can't say to yourself, Hey, you can't, you shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing that. You need yeah. money. This is a game where you need money. Right. So if anyone tells you you don't need a nine to five or you or you shouldn't or they may try to make you feel bad about that, they bullshit. Right. Don't 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 follow that. Like you do what you gotta do to 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 support your dream. You know what I'm saying? Like your nine to five, support your family. And there's so many ways to, to get into this game. There's so many ways of, of getting income that you could have your nine to five, still come home and still do what you got to do and still handle all your all your other responsibilities. You can do that. You just got to be disciplined. Right. And like you said, in the technical aspect, there are so many ways to, to earn things passively now. Right. Right. Exactly. So so once you've set up the right infrastructure on certain things, those things earn on their own. On their own. Right? Why, so why are you going to the other thing? Why are you going to the other thing? Then those other things might be okay. You might have set up your, you know, let's say, let's just take for example, you might be an artist that has, you know, um, good merch. Right. You, you you use your music to promote your merch. If you if you're promoting your music and you have a website that uses promotes your merch, once you put the music out there and promote the music, the merch will sell itself. Right. So it's not something that you have to physically take more time away to do once you set up. Right. Once you set up that infrastructure, then it, it's set up already. If you if you're selling something and you have the website and you have these things set up to sell on its own and to upsell and all those different things, then you don't have to worry about setting that up again. All you have to do now is do the content which you love doing. So again, you know, it's all about working smarter. And then once you kind of get the money where you need to get it, then you can make that decision. Okay, am I earning enough to 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 manage everything? Once you're able, once you're able to manage all your obligations, your savings, retirement, whatever, kid stuff, then you can say, okay, it's time for me to go full steam, and I can let go the other situation. But you know, I always tell them, burn a candle as long as you can. Um, there's been parts in our career where we've had records um, that were that were basically going platinum. And I was still in the private sector. Like not letting it go, not letting <laughs> like, it go. Like, not right. letting it go. Like there was no need for me to let it go, right? Because it, it wasn't impeding on it, right? Only right. until when we started to um, to, to now, when we started to travel around the, the, the country with Wu-Tang at the time, that, mm-hmm. and now it became physically impossible for you to do the private sector because now you had to be there at a certain time and I need to be in a different part of the country. That's different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I, you know, I always had the bandwidth to burn the candle at both ends. Should I suggest that for everybody? No, but (laughs) you know what I'm saying? But, but you know, you probably lose your hair like me, but you know, that's, that's, you know, that's what I wanted to do. That's how I felt. That's how it kept me on schedule. That's what I needed for myself, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, if for those who have the different level of bandwidth and have a different level of, um, of, of attention, they can do it a little bit differently, but I'm just saying from my personal experience, there was no issue with that. We we juggled both when we needed to do it. It's no issue. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, let's talk about um, last thing I wanted to talk about. Talk a little bit is 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 music marketing, right? Okay. And um, what what are people asking us? What do we think is the best platform now, twenty twenty one? We just talked uh, about it, <laughs> <laughs> or some of the best. We know mm-hmm. what's the we know we know that one is kind of you know, but let's talk about that. 
Oh, uh, uh, TikTok. We just, we just, we just spoke on that one. That's that's the, you know, that's the one now that seems to be, um, you know, getting a lot of records viral, and um, they're now expanding their 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 uh, the length of their videos, um, three to five minutes. So it's gonna create a more revenue stream. It's gonna create more opportunities for our content creators. So right now it's looking like TikTok is is, is 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 in the lead as far as um the platform that you need to be on. Um there's also uh YouTube. Um it's like a it's like a YouTube is like you can never deny YouTube. You, you know, it's like you know when it's all is said and done YouTube is almost like the grandfather of social media, it seems. You know, you got it. You got to You got to You got to make sure that you got that YouTube content. You know, you got to be on that content. That's a, that's a, that's a platform. That's very powerful, um, platform. Um, you can monetize, and there's a lot of opportunities with ads that you can do with YouTube. Um, what else? Facebook. Now, I'm just, uh, I'm just running. I'm just running through them. So, so some people will say, "Why would you say Facebook before Instagram?" Um. Well, Facebook. First of all, the uh, the ad campaigns, I think, are uh, robust. Like <laughs> you can't you can't really uh, front in, front on it too much. Um, like you you need a Facebook account to do an IG, a good IG. <laughs> And that's crazy too. A, a good IG campaign. Let's let's be clear. So the, you you, got, you have to have a Facebook account in order to do that. Which is which is wild. They they now that you can't even do it properly without having that. You know, they, it's it's intertwined. Um, Where does Twitter fit in all of this? Um, Twitter. Twitter is still is still uh in the mix. You should, you should still have a Twitter account because there's people out there who who there are still fans at a certain age, especially that may not uh, be on deck with some of the other um, platforms. And you don't want to leave nobody out. You want to make sure all your grounds are covered. So if Twitter's not your specific favorite, you still need to just have that on the side. You still need to, to, to be able to promote on there. You could tie your Twitter to your Instagram so that anytime you post on Instagram, it pulls up something on Twitter. Um, don't leave it out, you know, because you never know what Twitter may have in store. Don't sleep on them. I'm thinking. I'm where you are. I, I, I know that TikTok is number one. And. Um, I think what people don't also realize is that TikTok also has its own streaming platform, Mm -hmm. right? So there's also a streaming platform that's attached to TikTok that as TikTok grows, that streaming platform will become um, one of the um, more prominent ones. Um, TikTok is just, if 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 you're a new artist and you're not on TikTok, you're, you're, you hold this proverbial L, right? Like, like mm-hmm. you're you're just yeah. You're, you're putting yourself in a situation where you're going to take the L. Um, where else? Um, then secondly, like you said, I say YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, again, hold this proverbial L. Like you said, it's the the grandfather of them all. Um, you know the 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 thing that I like about TikTok and I also like about YouTube is that, of course, if you're big enough, you can monetize, right? Whereas with Instagram, the monetization isn't isn't there only by the, the highest, highest levels. And then, of course, you have to make those kind of um, partnerships with different brands in order to get paid on, on the Instagram platform, whereas you're not getting paid per view, right? Like, I think that's the that's what kind of makes YouTube so much more appealing for your content, even though you're still getting robbed. Um, at least you get something for it. Um, Facebook is why I would say number three, because at certain levels on Facebook as well, there is monetization. 
Um, they will allow you to be monetized for your content. And, you know, these, these places have the best reach. Um, um, the one that we didn't talk about was LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Um, you can use LinkedIn to market your music. Right. It just depends on who you've connected with on LinkedIn and you have to package your content a certain kind of way so that it can be received, um, um, quote unquote, professionally. Yeah, cause right. you can't you can't do it the same way you do it with with all the other platforms. No way. No, you can't do it the same way. But the reach is still there. Right. Meaning you're not dealing with the suppression engine that you would be dealing with with Facebook. The Facebook suppression engine is very real. If you have a a Facebook fan page or community page and you post content there, good luck having your, your, um, the people who follow your fan page, see your content. So I guess when we, when we talk about marketing the music though, Mm -hmm. what would you say is some ways that artists can market their music on the platforms? Like we're just talking about. Um, well, it's all content. It's all it's all content. You have to create content for everything you're doing in regards to your projects, your music. Um, we were just talking about LinkedIn, and what I I do want to add is um, LinkedIn. Um, you probably, as far as marketing, you know, promoting, may want to use LinkedIn as a platform to promote the success of your music versus the actual, you know, hear my song, hear my song, because you do that on all of the other platforms you do that on instagram where you're posting the videos and you're posting you know this come by come listen come stream you're doing that on youtube you're doing that on every platform so i think on linkedin may be a good platform to try something else where you're promoting the success of your of your record because you're going to be tuned into executives you're going to be tuned into business people who's going to going to want to do deals based on the success you've reached um and they're looking at numbers so I think LinkedIn would be a good place to where you promote how well your, your record is doing, uh, celebrating uh, the amount of streams or celebrating the amount of followers or uh, accomplishments for your, 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 your project. While the other platforms, mostly you would promote the actual song, with, whether it's videos, whether it's doing uh, any type of content related to videos or uh, promote, promoting some merch that ties in to, 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 to your, to your project. So it's just the marketing, I believe is you have to tailor it different for each platform, you know? Um, and I think if you need to tailor it slightly different for each platform, I think you'll get more, a more, uh, a more, more of an audience. You'll get, you'll get more bang for your buck per se. That's definitely a dope, um, a dope key. And for those who weren't listening, like, you use the professional platform to promote your professional success. Right. And I think that's, 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 a, that's the key right there. When you say that, like, Hey, you want to be, those are the places where the executive eyes, they want to see the numbers. They want to see the analytics. They want to see that you got the movement and the traction going and use that platform to promote that. Um, when we talk about a, a platform, like now, let's say, um, YouTube, mm-hmm. um, what I think people aren't using for YouTube and one of the ways that you can market on YouTube is, Hey, you got to do Google ads. Mm -hmm. And you know, YouTube has a unique feature now where you can literally promote your music in front of your favorite artists, right? You can set your ads up in a certain kind of way that your video can play before your certain, your your favorite artists. So if you got a, 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 you know, you can have a song that can play before a little baby Right. And, you know, that'll that'll if your song is has a certain feel or hit to it, um, that can help to definitely get you more views because your song will be playing, you know, that 15 seconds prior to their music. And if it's dope, people will continue to watch it and that will count as a view count. So, again, um, the the power of YouTube and the top the power of getting in front of people to get their attention, um, that's definitely something that folks need to definitely take a look at and making sure that they can continue to, to, to get in front of the, the, get in front of the audiences that can help to make or break your record. Um, same thing with, um, it's not the same thing, but 
even when we're using Facebook, Facebook again has that that targeting um, for interest. And if you know how to use that properly and demographics properly, then you can put yourself in a position where you your, your content can get consumed by the right audience and can help your content to grow, help your audience to grow. Um, so I think I think um, if you haven't taken any Facebook. If if you're not familiar with Facebook ads, it's something that you're going to definitely need as a as a new artist to be able to get your music into the masses. Yeah, yeah. So, I I, so with, with Instagram, when do you feel that Instagram is finally? I I think I read something the other day where Instagram is finally going to start to kind of create a similar creator content um, program to TikTok where you start getting paid for the content, which is probably 10 years too late. Yeah, yes, that, that, sounds, that sounds a little behind. But, they, don't, they, but they, have, they have to find a way to compete. But it goes, it goes back to what I, what I said earlier. You know, with these new, these new platforms, they, they're being fresh with their new ideas, while some of the, the other platforms that's been around a little bit longer, they're just trying to hold on, and they're just trying to like look at the new guys, like what you got going, so we can try and... And emulate it. So, um, Instagram. I mean, they're just trying to hold on, and they're trying to do whatever it takes um, to just to, to hang in there. Um, I don't think it's. I don't think it's going anywhere. Yeah, I don't think it's going anywhere. But I think there there's going to be a lot of new, a lot of new platforms that come out. That's going to be. Uh, that's going to do a lot of new things. And if Instagram does not. Um, keep up, they're not going to be the, the main people, I say the main platform to go to, you know, you're going to have TikTok, you're going to have whatever comes after that as the, the new main platform to go after. Why, why, why do you think TikTok is so appealing? <laughs> I mean, I, I guess we've already talked about it, but, you know, but it's like, I think outside I think outside of the, the, the features that are that are slightly different, I also think it's the new kid on the block. You know, I think it's the new the, the new girl that, you know, coming through the hood, the new <laughs> the new thing, you know. So, you know, it's like all eyes all eyes on that and, and, and until until that thing gets tired. <laughs> you know, until <laughs> until <laughs> until until uh you know if 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 it ain't bringing any new features, if it ain't you know continuously, you know it's gonna go away until the next person comes on the block. So um, you know that's 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 the nature of technology. You know, um, just being up to date with new technology, new things, new features, and that's what's gonna keep um, that's gonna keep the, the you know the platform alive. All your artists out there. You got to learn that platform. It's it's crucial to your success in 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 twenty twenty one. Like I couldn't I couldn't um, you know I I couldn't be more clear. I wish I could be more clear in saying that it's going to be critical to your success. Um, what do you think happened to like uh, platforms like? Uh, well, before I even get to that, like, um, what do you think about Twitch? Twitch is dope. Um, I know Twitch is a Twitch was uh, preferably a gaming platform, um, but it 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 has uh, the capability of being so much more. Um, and I think um, when it comes to like marketing music, I think it's it's getting there. But I think there's some things that you have to to do in order to. I think it requires a little bit more research, um, cause it's like it's really a gaming community, right. um, but a lot of the gamers are, you know, of course it's the music, of course. So there's definitely a way to intertwine the two. You just have to be real creative on how you do it, so it doesn't come off as uh, yet another uh, "Hey, listen to me," and you know, or you know, come listen to my music, you know, like everybody else and all the other platforms. You got to be really creative. Maybe mixing it into the the video gaming world, um, and doing it in that way. But you have to do it in a way that it stands out and it doesn't become sp- like spammy. Then, then, then I I didn't talk about the elephant. You know, the other elephant that um 
seems to be making a change from adult content. Oh, um, only fans. <laughs> Like you know, how how could we forget that one, bro? Like how could we forget? Yo, that's the, that's the the, the 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 bait and switch. You gotta love it. They use they use you to promote the platform, and then they get rid of your ass. Yeah, like that's classic. So they they so they use the adult content to draw everybody in, and then now that they have big name artists on the platform, legitimate big name artists on the platform, they no longer need. The um the adult content, and they're they're, they're removing it, right? Because so, what you what you have happening is that a lot of these credit card companies don't want to associate themselves with that content, right? And they don't want to process the payments. So then the question, so the big question is, you know, will uh, OnlyFans will they be able to survive without the uh, that adult content that makes Absol- them absolutely. Absolutely. Because once you once you switch the OnlyFans, like once you switch the OnlyFans, um um like you know, quite a you know, we got our OnlyFans, right? But we don't use it, right? <laughs> but 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 I had to set up the account, right? Like I have to set this stuff up because you want to maintain you know, in this game you have to make sure that your names are secure, you know. Right. And all of those things are you you if you if you haven't done that you got to make sure those things are secure and you make sure no one takes your name it can be posted as you online. So of course we set these things up. Mm-hmm. But because of the nature of it, you say, "Well, I don't I don't really want to be part of that community, right?" Right, right. But if but if they change it now to it's going to be okay, it's all about more exclusive content for you, right? Mm-hmm. Like say we want to create an exclusive content like okay, you want to um, say we're hosting a webinar um, talking about, you know, how to make or how to basically sell your beats, right? To, mm-hmm. to, to how to pitch your beats to artists. And there's an OnlyFans access site. That makes sense, right? Right, right. That's how it should be used. Right. Right. It should be used for exclusive background content on your favorite artists, influencers, you know, DIY people, you know, DIY people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if if you're going to turn it into a peep show, yeah, because you don't, you definitely don't want your 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 professional stuff positioned next to any of that, right? <laughs> because when it's time for you to, when it's time for you to start trying to sell yourself to get these brand endorsements or become a brand ambassador, you can't have that shit on your platform, right? Like that's just for keeping it a hundred, keeping it real. Like you can't have that on your platform. They're gonna, you know, we're gonna say, "Well, oh, you slut shaming or something like that." But no, it's just you got to call it what it is. It's right. adult. Con- it's adult content, and not everybody's for that. You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm not mad. You know, if you want to do that, this is time and place for everything. This is time and place for everything. I'm not mad at you if you want to do that shit. Go ahead, knock yourself out. You know what I mean? But you know, it's not for me per se. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to do is fine, you know. But um, I, I find it. I find it again. Like you know, um, I'm I'm waiting for the switch to take place. Yeah, they they have a big, big, big valuation. Um, now, um, because they said because of artists like Cardi B and some other people that are coming on, they they're gonna move away from that other content. And I don't know, um, what some of these um. Models um, are, are going to do. So this is going to be a great time for another uh, another platform to to jump up and and and, and, and offer and offer it for exclusive yeah. adult content. Yeah, specifically, like that's that's what we do. <sighs> you see that like, you, you, you probably just we probably gave somebody an idea that we they, probably need to do for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey! Bring all your OnlyFan content over here to, you yeah. know, only Porn, something else. Pornhub meets Snapchat or something. <laughs> I'm surprised Pornhub didn't do it. Well, then again, you know they already have that stuff, so whatever. But that's a whole other stuff. That's a whole other topic. Yeah. It's it's the Architect Beat Music Business Podcast, folks. Yep. Please, please make sure you're checking us out at www.architectbeats.com. You know, that mm-hmm. is our flagship. We have www.architectbeatsentertainment as well.com. Um, architectbeatsent.com. 
but um, we're also looking for artists. Yeah. So, um, there will be some announcements that go out with that late um soon. You know, producers too, producers too, artists and producers and songwriters. Yeah. We are looking forward to join the team. Um, you know, for those who don't know, we currently have a nice little distribution situation with the Orchard, uh, Sony, and we're, we're definitely looking for the next set of artists. So, um, if you know people, if you know, you know, then just you know hit us up. But if you have questions or concerns about the music business. Topics that you want us to address, hit us up. You know, uh, Twitter is good. Uh, Facebook is good. You know, uh, we have the Facebook group, which is growing. Um, so, you know, definitely join that where we put a little bit more tips and and we can be a little bit more granular with telling telling you exactly, you know, what to do, uh, how to do it, and, you know, be a little bit more detailed and that we can do more in those forums that we do in an hour. But, um, um, you know, share. Share the content. If you like what we're doing, share it. You know, that that's always the best thing. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell another friend. Yep. And um yep. anything you want to add on it to brother before we before we cut out? Man, until next time, man. Hit us up. All right now. Thanks for thanks for thanks for listening, folks. Thanks for watching. Peace.